What is up guys? Welcome to this video. In this one, I'm going to be handing you the keys for being extremely open-minded. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe because it helps my channel to grow and I greatly appreciate that. Right off the bat, you might think, Lucas, I'm already open-minded. What do I need this video for? But can you be open to the fact that you're not open-minded? Can you simply entertain that idea without closing down to it? Before I really start this video, uh, I wanna say that I have a sheet of notes pinned in the comment section below. And that's basically how I'm going to be doing this video so you guys can kind of follow along with me if you want. But I'm gonna start off with an Aristotle quote uh, that I don't have written down currently. But I believe it's along the lines of, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain an idea without accepting it. And I wanna just uh, talk about that simple quote for a brief period of time. To entertain an idea without accepting it. How does that actually uh, feel as well? And if you think about it, doing that feels very fluid. It feels very alive. It feels um, unattached, unattached to thoughts, unattached to outcomes. And it feels um, significantly less reactive than uh, <laughs> how most people ordinarily uh, sort of feel. Now, as human beings, uh, we have a bit of an issue. Our attention and our awareness is so contracted and lost in thoughts that our whole sense of the world and our whole sense of ourself is basically trapped in thoughts. That our sense of ourself and the world comes from thinking because of how much importance we give our thoughts and how much attention and just overall emphasis that we place on thinking. So we get our sense of ourselves and reality from our logic, from our just never-ending stream of imagination. And I like using the term imagination uh, when I refer to thoughts because imagination has this sort of loosey-goosey aspect to it, this very not serious aspect to it. And we take our imagination far too seriously, which... Um, <laughs> I like phrasing it that way because it seems like imagination is not something that you should take seriously because it's not real, because it's insignificant, because it doesn't really matter that much. But then we actually in practice do very much the opposite. And when I refer to thoughts here and imagination um, and really the problem of it, the problem is not in creativity or analysis, or problem solving, those are all phenomenal things. The problem is when our thoughts completely dominate our life, our awareness, our sense of self, our sense of the world, and we can't break out of these repetitive thought loops. We can't uh, break ourselves out of this sort of mental matrix that we're ongoingly constructed. Uh, constructing. <clears throat> now, this video um, is going to have practices. It's going to have theory and practices in it for uh, helping you to understand closed-mindedness and helping you to open up your mind. And a very good time to assess how open you are is when you're stressed. Now, I love uh, assessing myself when I'm stressed. And personally today, uh, I felt a bit more stressed than I usually do. And this is just 
prime time for being conscious because this is when you can really see the deep-rooted resistance patterns inside you and how they play out and how you construct them and you can really shine a lot of awareness on them and get them to kind of undo themselves. And when you're doing this sort of personal development and self-transcendence type work, you're going to have a lot of frustration because as you begin to grow, you're going to want to seek familiar things because the mind is a very interesting, very interesting system. The mind seeks growth on one hand, and on another hand, it seeks safety. And these are two needs that are somewhat at odds with each other. So when we grow, naturally this changes our sense of self. This is kind of changing our life. It's changing how we feel about reality, how we feel about ourselves. And the part of us that wants to stay safe assesses that and it interprets it as threatening to the current uh, identity that we have in place to our current self and don't think of <clears throat> don't think of any uh, particular need as good or bad so don't think of growth as the good one and then safety as oh that's the bad one um, no they're both very functional they're both very useful I mean they're both very useful when they're functioning properly uh, the problem is that we don't really see this in action. We're sort of just uh, reacting to this kind of stuff. So when we have something that is growing us, we're going to be met with resistance patterns later on. So for example, you can eat healthy for a week. You can, you know, fulfill your goals for your diet. And then you're going to notice that I really want that chocolate cake. <laughs> or you go to the gym every day <clears throat> and then on day five day five in a row you think to yourself like i gotta drink water you think to yourself <clears throat> i don't want to go to the gym today i want to sit down and be lazy because our sort of equilibrium is being thrown off our sense of what it is to be ourselves and what our world is and how we interpret the world and how we feel in the world this is all changing and it might be changing too fast so the part of ourself that wants safety interprets that as a threat like i said so think of growth as two steps forward one step back two steps forward one step back and really if you want to be very efficient in your growth uh, it's not about brute force growing. I'm going to meditate for 12 hours and I'm going to work out and then I'm going to never eat cake ever again or something like that. Um, although that stuff is fine. Um, you're going to want to respect the part of yourself that just wants to be safe, just wants to remain in comfort, just wants to relax, just wants to rest. Uh, when you actually have compassion for that aspect of yourself, your growth will see uh, a lot more results uh, in a shorter period of time because you're going to spend a lot less energy fighting yourself and you're going to spend a lot more energy um, being aware of yourself. So instead of reacting to yourself, you'll be able to sort of respond to yourself in a much more fluent, uh, fluid, I mean, fluid, alive, and sort of dynamic way. So this kind of leads me this leads me into my first point. So why we become closed-minded. So I'm gonna talk about the first point. And like I said, I have this in the pinned comment below. The main reason we close our minds is to defend ourselves. We want to keep our precious ideas alive and cling to them. We do, we do not want to have our model of reality changed and or questioned. Now let's talk about that simple point for a brief period of time. The part of us that wants to grow and the part of us that wants to stay safe. When we're closing our mind, we're sort of reacting. 
and where we're react where we are re uh, where we are reacting from is the part of us that just wants to stay safe and this is rather dysfunctional when we're simply reacting uh, like an animal and rather robotically. So when we're presented with an idea that questions our model of reality, questions our ideas, that is typically when the mind closes down because when <laughs> something questions our current ideas, the current ideas that we have in place, they want to survive. And when something threatens them, the part of you that wants to stay safe interprets that as death. Something is trying to kill an aspect of myself. That's how it's really interpreted. And there's nothing bad about any of that. The problem is when we're just unconsciously reacting and we don't actually see what's going on while we're doing this action. Now, I'm going to reread uh, one of the sentences here. We want to keep our precious ideas alive and cling to them. So we, as humans, are very much lost in our heads uh, a large portion of the time. We're very much defined by our thinking, or at least we think we are. <laughs> um, and a lot of our most preciously held beliefs are nothing that is very authentic to us. It's something that was sort of presented to us and adopted on basically blind faith. And um, you can know that to be true by just recalling your childhood and the sort of family you grew up in and the school you went to. And you can see that there were a lot of beliefs that you just accepted on blind faith. And even if you're beginning to question your beliefs and you're sort of adopting new beliefs, that's not good enough either, really. That's not good enough either. Because if you're just adopting new beliefs, I mean, you're not really getting to the root of the problem. You're really just rearranging a house of cards. And I have two phenomenal videos. I'm going to be making, I'm going to be making a third and fourth a video on this topic. It's how beliefs work and how beliefs shape you. So you can find them on my channel. They're relatively recent. You won't have to scroll too far. Um, but it talks all about how beliefs work. And if we're going to talk about open-mindedness, it's very important to know how beliefs work. Now, um, just <laughs> rearranging our beliefs uh, really isn't isn't good enough. Um, <clears throat> it's like rearranging the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. There's that classic quote. It doesn't matter what the hell we do. The ship is going down and we're screwed. Really what we want to do is understand... <clears throat> man, I'm, I'm choking on like some granola I ate earlier. But what we want to do is <laughs> we want to understand how beliefs work, or basically the mechanics of belief, basically the underlying mechanisms of how beliefs function. And when we actually see that, and we see our minds as a system, a very alive system that seeks to maintain itself, that is when we make significant progress, when we can deeply grasp how that works, uh, conceptually and in our experience. That is... Uh, very significant progress right there. Uh, because just by noticing that alone, there's going to be uh, a deeper desire to, well, question our beliefs and be open to alternative ideas, but also be relatively unattached to beliefs. And really, uh, there's no real reason to be attached to your beliefs. You didn't even really create them. You somewhat just adopted them for the most part. You know, there wasn't some sort of belief agency that sat you down when you were five years old and they said, here's the big book of beliefs, here's the big list of beliefs and pick your favorite five, pick your favorite ten beliefs. No, it was just kind of thrown at you. You were told this is what the world is, this is what's good and bad and, you know, if you don't act like this, well, then you're screwed. 
you know, this is how society works and you got to fit into it or else, or else you're screwed. And in a sense, that's good. You know, we agree not to kill each other, things like that, you know. But um, the problem is that we don't really understand how this creates a sense of closeness within ourselves and how this really goes on, how these ideas go on to really create a life of their own. So it's not so much that we use the ideas to help us, <laughs> but that these ideas take on a life of their own. They, they close us down to alternative ideas and these ideas really just seek to survive. And there's nothing bad about this. Um, there's nothing at all bad about this. It just is what it is. And if you really want to um, be more conscious, be more self-aware, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, but <laughs> you don't have to do anything. But it would help you a lot to actually respect the fact that your beliefs and your ideas want to survive and to, in a sense, let them survive. Let them be there. And then when you're very much ready to look at alternative ones is when, when you, um, you know, begin to let them go. And I would honestly recommend... Um, pairing what I just said with honesty. So basically being honest with yourself that, yeah, I'm being closed-minded. And I'm going to be giving you techniques in this video for how to realize that uh, you're closed-minded. Basically, how to actually get a, a feel for being closed-minded. Second point is closed-mindedness is a defense mechanism for keeping yourself alive. Like I said, uh, we have this sort of identity the sort of psychological self that is created by our thoughts. We invest a lot of our attention and energy in our thoughts, in our beliefs. It's very wrapped up with our sense of ourself and our sense of the world. And when we close down from an opposing belief or an opposing thought, what's going on is we are interpreting some kind of threat to us. And... Because our beliefs are, like I just said, so wrapped up in our sense of self and the world, uh, we believe that these thoughts and beliefs are us. So when it's attacked, we very much feel that we are being attacked. And even on a, on a very physical level, we feel it. We tense up. Uh, our body gets very rigid, stiff. It sort of contracts. So, uh, yeah, just something to be aware of. Moving on. Noticing what is happen, happening in states of openness and closeness. So the first point is open-mindedness and closed-mindedness have an energetic difference. And uh, I'll read the second point. When we move from a state of openness to closeness or vice versa, there is an actual energetic shift that occurs inside of us. We can observe this happening as we shift from open to closeness. And you can do this right now. Uh, if you have the awareness and the sort of flexibility to just really open your mind to anything that's happening in your experience and then close it down as well. So you can actually go back and forth between these two, like putting on a pair of glasses and then, you know, or taking off a pair of glasses, putting on a new one, and then swapping between the two. Um, now, I have some statements uh, that I wrote up that are going to help you to notice what it's like to be open and closed-minded. So these are statements for noticing how we open and close our minds. Uh, <laughs> now, this is at the bottom of the pinned comment, if you want to look at them. So do not concern yourself with whether the statement is true or false. Simply watch how your mind reacts to the statements. Watch it open and close and try your best to remain open. Notice the energetic shift that occurs and the difference in feeling uh, and the difference in feeling of both open and closed mindedness. Now, uh, don't care about whether these statements are, are true or false. You want to actually feel into your headspace, really. You want to notice your mind. And now, very quickly, I'm going to make a very crucial distinction between awareness and the contents of experience. Now, what are the contents of experience? They're thoughts 
they are mental images, they are anything that's happening in your experience, your surrounding objects, yourself, your body, um, your feelings. So now that we've distinguished awareness from the contents of experience, and you will, you'll have to notice that in your own experience, we can just use our pure awareness, non-judgmental, open awareness to watch what happens to our mind when I present certain information to your mind. So the earth is flat. Can you simply, like Aristotle said, just entertain that idea? I'm not telling you to accept it. I'm not even saying it's true. I'm also not saying it's false. All I'm doing is saying to you that the earth is flat. And can you simply watch yourself react to that statement? Now, if you have a belief that says the earth is round, this statement that the earth is flat is not going to uh, flow well with you. There's going to be a closedness that happens in your sort of headspace. You can see how you don't want to entertain the idea. You think the flat earthers are clearly idiots. They're morons, whatever. There's a whole bunch of judgments that come. There's a whole bunch of preconceived notions based off your previous conditioning, based off your previous belief system, based off your previous ideas, based off what you're currently holding as true. And I simply just want you to notice the switch from, okay, the earth is round. Can you be open to that idea? And you're probably relatively, you're probably open to that. Odds are you think the earth is round. Uh, and your mind is, okay, yeah, that makes sense. The earth's round. But then when I say the earth is flat, you notice that shift in closed uh, closed close mindedness. You, it, it's a, an actual subtle feeling that's why i said it's an energetic shift that occurs somewhat in your headspace and even in your in your body you can feel it and you can just see yourself judging it and pushing it away pushing it away because what are you really doing here you're defending yourself that's what's going on you have an idea that you like the earth is round and you're defending this idea that's what's going on here it's not about uh, truth in a sense. It's about defending ideas. Even if the idea that you have um, <laughs> is, is relatively true, still, there is a lot of defending of the idea that uh, comes into play. And this defending of ideas is coming from a belief that we are our, our, we are our ideas. We are, A-R-E, our, uh, O-U-R, ideas. And like I said, don't concern yourselves with whether the statement is true or false. Uh, concern yourself with how you react to the statement. Even if you're holding something like 2 plus 2 equals 4, can we agree that that's correct? Okay, 2 plus 2 equals 5. Can you just be open to that information entering your mind? That's it. Just without thinking it's stupid, without pushing it away, just let it exist. Let it live. That's it. Let that aspect of reality just live. With Just don't attack it. Just 2 plus 2 equals 5. That's it. And you just watch how your mind closes. Watch the feelings that arise inside you. Watch the sort of headspace and the mental energy change. And that's it. Now, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Okay, like it's obviously we get it. We get uh, the, you know, we, we get that simple math. But when we get ideological about these statements, when we push to defend them, see, this is a game that um, generally, I don't think most people want to partake in, but they find themselves partaking in it anyway, where, where they're just left <laughs> feeling isolated or tense 
from their surroundings and they have a need to just defend themselves and push their values onto someone else. Uh, and this is basically ideological behavior and it can show you how unstable you are with your uh, view of the world, how, uh, how you lack confidence in your own um, ideas really, in your own worldview, your own ability to just even make sense of the world. That's what ideological behavior really shows. Um, or it can show you that you're just stressed out at that moment. You know, there's a lot of potential reasons, but for, for, the, most, for the most part, when people uh, are deeply pushing their values onto you, it's not so much about uh, truth. It's more about them reproducing their values in you. It's about their ideas becoming alive inside of you. It's like a reproduction effect. So <laughs> humans have sex to reproduce, but <laughs> this mental conditioning sort of imposes itself onto another person uh, in order to reproduce. So like I said, we gotta think of these sort of mental habits and these ideas as alive. They're very much alive. They're not just stupid non-living things. They're very much alive, okay? They're very much fluid and just dynamic. And they seek to reproduce themselves. They seek to um, maintain themselves. And there's healthy ways of, of doing that. Some ideas can be very helpful. For example, um, using language to make sense of, of the world, you know? Language was, for the most part, um, it wasn't really pushed on you, but you somewhat voluntarily picked it up. There was an aspect of you that realized its use and was able to start using it as a tool for communicating with others and making sense of the world. Uh, and then later on in life, the tool started to use you, but topic for another video. I've already made quite a few videos on, on that. Um, but for the most part, back to the, the, the essence of this conversation. Our ideas seek to survive and they seek to reproduce themselves. And when we believe that we are these ideas, we're very much pushed around, we're very much out of touch with reality, and we're generally in a state of suffering because uh, it's untruthful. It's sort of lost, uh, it's very contracted, it's a very isolated sense, and you can really feel that for yourself. Uh, but you're going to need some honesty and some awareness. <laughs> uh, but moving on to the next statement. The entire world was made by a space kangaroo. So like a spaceman, but a kangaroo. Like he had the space helmet and he's just like bouncing around, hopping around in space. That's how the entire world was created. Now, <laughs> just watch yourself close. There's no way in hell you're going to be open to that idea. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but can I be open-minded to you being open to, to that idea? Um, but for real, um, watch your actual reaction to that statement. Don't call it ridiculous. Oh yeah, but Lucas knows he's being an idiot right now. He just wants to tell. No, 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 no. Let the information smoothly enter your mind. You don't have to accept it. You just have to let it enter your mind and be able to entertain the idea in a sort of loose, uh, flowing, and dynamic way. Not in a way that's very rigid and tense and contracted and inflexible, but allow yourself to you know, open up your body, be flexible, be receptive to what's happening in the moment. Allow what's happening in the moment to happen. If I'm saying the world was made by a space kangaroo and you're... Um, or what's the word I'm looking for? You're taking that information in. Let yourself take that information in. You don't have to actually accept it, but you just have to notice how you are relating to that information and how being closed works. 
And I'm purposely picking very ridiculous sounding stuff because I want to get that reaction out of you. I want a clear uh, example. I want you to see it very clearly. If I pick something that isn't as ridiculous, um, then you're not going to see it uh, for, for really what it is. You're not going to get that full taste of it. Moving on, you came from an egg. So you actually hatched from an egg like a chicken. Like you were actually, like you, you, you moved out of the egg, okay? Like you hatched from an egg. Can, can you accept? That's actually how you were born. Like in the hospital, there was a bed there and there was an egg on top of the bed and you were in the egg and then you hatched out of it. <laughs> That's how humans are born. We hatch from eggs. Can you just let that information um, enter your mind? Don't accept it, but also don't push it away. You don't have to say this is true or this is false. Just allow it, allow it but by don't accept it. I mean, you don't have to accept that it's true or, or false, but you have to allow it to move into your mind. And if you can't do that, that's 100% fine, but just notice that you can't do that. Notice that you have trouble actually being open to ideas and notice how you are clinging on to your preconceived beliefs about how the world works. Moving on, you are imaginary. This whole thing, all of this right here is completely imaginary. Like none of this is real, this is all fantasy. Your whole life is a fantasy. Can you be open to that idea? Does that shake up your sense of yourself and, and reality? Can you just be open to that information? You don't actually have to uh, just believe me, but you just have to be open to the ideas that I'm presenting. You just have to be aware of yourself closing down. That's it. If you can't remain open, that's fine, but just notice that you can't remain open. That's it. Notice how it feels to be closed-minded. Notice how it feels, feels very contracted. It feels very identified with thought. It feels very unreceptive to the experience. It feels very reactive, like a knee-jerk reaction. It doesn't feel very alive. It doesn't feel fluid. It doesn't feel flexible. It doesn't feel expansive. You have $12 billion in your bank account. Can you be open to the idea that you are extremely successful and that you have billions of dollars in your bank account? This one's funny because there's that whole law of attraction community um, that just wants to, it's very airy-fairy at times. They want to manifest this new car. They'll manifest it from nothing, from just their imagination. Just let it appear in my driveway tomorrow morning. Um, but they can't even be open-minded to the idea of, of them really, really being this successful. You know, not everyone, but, uh, you know, they want, they want success. They want this and that and that. And that's all great stuff. Uh, but they can't be open to the idea of that being their life. And why not? Like those are, you know, that those are pretty nice things to want. It would be nice to have a lot of money because you can buy food. You don't have to worry about money problems, things like that. Um, but they, they can't be open to that. Why can't they? Because they're currently identified with their sort of current thoughts, their current beliefs about how money works, their current beliefs about their status and wealth and stuff like that, that their current belief system literally can't allow them to be successful because they're just not open to being successful. And uh, they just believe that it's something that can just never happen. And um, yeah, so just be, be open to the idea of you being very successful. You're a very successful human being. Can you just be open to that? Let that information just enter your mind and just see what happens. Are you open? Or are you closed? Just be honest with yourself. No answer is good or bad. Just how do you react to the information? So yeah, people <laughs> will want to be successful, but they can't be open to uh, being successful. Uh, you are a wonderful person. Every aspect of you 
is wonderful. Every aspect of you is not bad. It's not, it's not bad. You're a wonderful person. You're exactly how you should be. And you're, you're actually perfect being that exact thing that you are right now. How do you react? Oh, but I can lose this 20 pounds. Oh, I, my hair doesn't look nice. Oh, but I got this pimple on, on the tip of my nose right here. Oh, it's disgusting. Look at this. Oh, oh, and I have this bad habit of picking my nose. Oh, and I bite my nail. No, 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 no. You're a wonderful human being. You're a delight to be around. You're, you're, you're perfect just, just sitting there. Can you, can you be open to that? Can you be open to just being uh, very comfortable and very embracing of yourself? Or do you uh, push that away and you're close to it and you're getting rather judgmental about yourself? The next one is you are successful, but I basically already did that. This one's a bit funny. <laughs> you're wrong about everything. Can you be open to that? Your whole worldview, your whole, like, you don't, you like, like, what you think this is, is wrong. Like, what you, th like, you think this is a cup? Wrong. This isn't a cup. Wrong. You think this is paper? Wrong. You think this is a video? Wrong. You're wrong about everything. Everything is wrong. <laughs> Every idea you have is wrong. Just, can you be open to that? Ah, man, I love water. Can you simply be open to the idea that everything you think that you know about the world is wrong and is not the world? Can you be open to that idea? If you can't, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But just watch how you react to the information. That's basically it. Moving on, uh, and by watch how I react to it, watch your body. Watch how it gets tense in certain areas, in the gut, in the legs. Watch the mental energy. Watch how it feels very contracted. Watch how you feel very identified with your beliefs that arise. You feel like they're very precious to you. And watch how you're unwilling to let them go. Watch the unwillingness to entertain the ideas that I have. You created the entire world and forgot that you did. Can you be open to that? That everything that exists is something that you created. You created it all for yourself. And then you forgot that you did in one sort of magic trick in one little, and then you all forgot it all. And you've convinced yourself that you haven't created it all. Can you be open to that? You created the entire universe. Just be open. That's it. Let the information inside your head and that's it. When the thought naturally passes away, let it naturally pass away. Don't push or pull with it. Don't judge it. Watch how you go into your preconceived ideas about what the world is, watch how you immediately pull up your whole belief system and says, nope, can't be it because it's the Big Bang or it's God in six, seven days, whatever. Oops. Uh, and watch how immediately you reference this belief system that you have, your whole value system, and you seek to maintain this basically house of cards. <laughs> And you might think, is being open too dangerous? Well, I'll be getting into that soon. Because Lucas, if I'm too open-minded, then what happens if I believe some nonsense? And the truth is, is right now you're already believing a bunch of nonsense. There's a whole bunch of garbage in your worldview. There's a whole bunch of limiting beliefs about yourself that are not true at all. And you're not willing to let them go. You're not willing to assess them. And you're really just closed about it. So... <laughs> Thinking that, oh, if I'm open, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adopt a bunch of garbage beliefs. No, no, it's going to be quite the opposite. If you're open, you're going to be uh, more receptive to reality. You're going to be able to see things from uh, very different angles that other people didn't see them from before. Einstein, he made the theory of relativity. Space and time are relative. 
Whereas before, I believe they thought they were absolute. <laughs> they thought that reality is just space and time. Whereas Einstein, I don't know how the hell he thought of it, but for the sake of this video, I'll say, hmm, what if they're not absolute? And he entertained that idea that went against so many scientists' beliefs, and he made the, the theory of relativity. So, <laughs> and you... You know, how do you think those scientists felt before? And a lot of the world, they thought space and time is absolute. And then, oh, it's relative. No, that's garbage. You know, they were very closed. They said, yeah, you know, if I'm open to that, then I'm going to believe in garbage. No, for, for the most part, a lot of people's beliefs are garbage. They're based off uh, their Instagram feeds, but not even just, just that. They're based off a lack of high quality understanding of how the world works. Uh, they're based off just things that were pushed or just imposed on them at a young age. And they were never really examined. They were never really let go of. And for the most part, it doesn't even really matter the quality of your beliefs. <laughs> what dominantly matters is how tight you hold them. And most people hold them so tightly. So it's this sort of grasping and holding aspect that's rather dysfunctional and you can feel that it's dysfunctional because it actually creates suffering in your life. It creates a sense of resistance to the world. It creates a sense of um, attachment to your imaginary ideas. Moving on, black is white and white is black. So black is white and white is black. Flip everything on its head. Life is death and death is life. Um, true is false and false is true. Flip any idea that you have on your head. I'm a woman. Right here, I'm a woman. <laughs> and if you're, if you're a woman, you're a guy. And if you're a guy, you're, you're a woman. Or whatever you are. Now, just be open. That's it. Don't, you don't have to care about whether what I'm saying is true or false. We're just doing this for the sake of the experiment. We're just doing this to see how closed-mindedness works in a human being and you're the perfect test subject because you're not a human being <laughs> can you be open to that you're not a human being just be open that's it you don't just you know don't tense everything up and pull your whole value structure out and impose it on me you're in the comments you're a goddamn idiot man you're a fool um just be open to what I'm saying and nothing more. It's, it's rather simple. It's shockingly simple, actually. But the problem is that we have a massive habit of just going down this same road. And this habit gains a sense of momentum. And it's very much alive. And it seeks to maintain itself. It's like if you're walking in the snow. I don't know how many of you guys have experienced snow. But I live in Toronto, Canada. And there's a hell of a lot of snow in the winter. And sometimes when we're outside and there's no sidewalk, there's no paved road or sidewalk to walk on, uh, people will, you know, just walk in the snow. And there's footprints in, in the snow. And each person follows those footprints. So we all follow this path because we don't want to, you know, go down that uncharted territory. Because, <laughs> you know, in this case, I, I'm going to walk in, in that path for the most part. But when it comes to our mind... We can think about it in a similar way. We have sort of created that path and we're constantly walking down it. And the thing is, is when it comes to our mind, uh, we're very trapped in that conditioning and we're unable to sort of look at it from an alternate point of view, from a higher point of view. And we just find ourselves identifying with this conditioning and believing that this is us and using that conditioning to define who and what we are, which isn't uh, what we actually are. It's just a misconception that we have. Now, going back to is being too open dangerous? Oh man, what a perfect, what a perfect, <laughs> what a perfect statement. Uh, well, I mean, what a perfect question. So I wrote, not at all, being closed-mindedness, or being closed-minded, I guess I got to fix that. I got some typos on my sheet. Being closed-minded is significantly more dangerous than being open-minded. Notice the actual quality of your feelings and 
clarity when you are able to remain open versus being closed. So when you're closed, notice your lack of ability to be clear about ideas and notice how it's just uh, a series of thoughts coming out of you in a very aggressive way, in a very somewhat hostile way, in a somewhat tense way, in a somewhat contracted way. Now, the second point, being open does not mean you simply accept the idea on blind faith. It means you are able to simply allow the information to enter your mind without having your current beliefs push the information out and or block it out entirely. So I've already explained a lot of this stuff. It's very simple, to be honest. It's not very complicated. It's just basic observations about what's going on when we are exposed to a particular thing. So, like I said, when you're closed, your whole belief system comes out. Uh, it, it, it all comes into play. And that belief system is alive. Just, just like you and me, in the same sense that when you're hungry, you want to eat because you don't want to starve to death. That belief system wants to stay alive. Doesn't matter if it's true or false, it wants to stay alive. And... <laughs> Uh, if we care about truth and if we care about cleaning ourselves up, um, being open-minded is very beneficial. Being closed-minded is very beneficial when you don't care about any of that stuff. And that's fine. You don't have to care. Uh, being closed-minded is phenomenal for basically keeping yourself and your whole worldview uh, intact, no matter whether it's true or false. It's phenomenal for, yeah, just simply defending yourself like an animal, really. And you might say, but Lucas, what if I have the truth and now I'm being closed-minded? No, 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 no. Not that fast, buddy. Not that fast. <laughs> I doubt that you have the full picture of reality. Really? Maybe you do. Maybe you got the full picture of reality. Maybe you do but maybe you don't. So even if something, uh, you know, is false and we can actually very easily see it's false, like someone is just very much full of crap, uh, we can actually be open still. It doesn't mean that we're gonna fall for that crap. It doesn't mean that we're gonna be tricked and fooled. Uh, we're just open to it and no, you know, if someone's telling you two plus two equals five, you know, just let the information come in and that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> you know, be open to what they're saying, be receptive to what they're saying, but it doesn't make sense. Just two, two plus two doesn't equal five. It's rather simple to us because we're so conditioned to think mathematically. That's why it's simple to us, not because it's an actual simple thing, but because humans are very logical or at least we're very conditioned to be logical. Um, so being closed-minded, uh, for the most part, is going to really screw you over. Um, you don't have to be open-minded. I'm not, you know, forcing my values onto you in any way. But if you're interested in being very open-minded, this video will be very useful to you. But if you're interested in just being closed-minded, I mean, you might as well click off the video. You should probably have, would have already done that a long time ago, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but... The thing about being closed-minded is that it's really just kind of a state of suffering. And it's not very honest either. It's this sort of arrogant uh, ignorance almost of like, I know exactly what, what's going on and you're 100% wrong. And typically a person isn't 100% wrong because if we think of truth, not just as black or white, right or wrong, we think of it as a spectrum. Some people say things that are like 20% true and like 80% false. And it's helpful to go in there and find that 20% of truth and extract it. So it's like finding a diamond in a big pile of dog shit. And you're able to put a glove on, go in there, pick out the diamond, go home and wash it and polish it. And now you have a, you know, a diamond, you know, there's no dog shit on it. It's clean, it's sanitized, you're good. Now you got a diamond and it's useful. It's great. You can sell that diamond. You can put it in your ear if you want. I don't know. You can put it in your 
nail it into your forehead, whatever. There was a rapper, I forgot his name, but he, he had like a diamond, like, well, I don't know if it was like stitched into his forehead. And I think at a concert, he got it like ripped out. So I mean, maybe don't do that with, with a diamond. <laughs> maybe just keep it somewhere somewhat safe and sell it or do, do something. I don't know, but maybe don't attach it to your skin. Uh, especially right here where everyone can see a massive diamond in your face. You'll probably get robbed. Uh, <laughs> now, um, having the willingness to challenge our own views is important for developing ourselves to the highest levels of human development that are possible. So there are levels of development to human beings. There's levels of psychological development and each level of development uh, is able to actually create a more accurate view of the world. And there are levels of development past you. There is levels of development past everyone. Even the most developed people on earth right now, in 1,000 years, if humans keep growing, are going to look like fools. So, uh, <laughs> you know, they're going to look like fools relative to that even more advanced stage of development. So, um, being closed-minded, like I said, it's a rather arrogant and ignorant position to hold. And truth doesn't really operate in this 100% true versus 100% false kind of way. It's usually a sort of partial truth. When we're dealing with the sort of relative world, it's usually, um, you know, something will be like 80% true, 20% false. Or 66% false, 34% true, whatever. Um, but when we're closed, we don't see it like that. We see it as what I'm saying is just correct. And it's, like I said, a very ignorant and arrogant place to be. I don't really say that with uh, judgment, but I say that with um, kind of just an observation about how people are when they're being very closed. It's a very deep unwillingness to check yourself, really. And... It's not a comfortable position to be in. I personally don't find it comfortable. So this is the fourth point on is being open, is being too open uh, dangerous. Being open allows us to hear more information and enhance our perspectives. We'll be able to inquire into many different ideas that we would typically push out of our awareness. So there's a lot of potential information out there that uh, you've never heard of and isn't actually going to fit into your current web of beliefs. Uh, because it's just not in there and it might contradict it. Although there's truth in it and there's value in it. But if you're closed-minded, you'll just push it all out in order to maintain this sort of house of cards that you've built, um, which I would recommend not doing. There's nothing really precious about your beliefs, to be honest. You didn't even really consciously pick them. They were sort of presented to you and then you just adopted them for the most part. And they're not even, they're not what you, what you even are. You're not defined by, by your beliefs, really. Uh, so you need to have the openness to just inquire into more ideas and more perspectives and not just close down from them, even if they sound ridiculous, because they only sound ridiculous due to your current web of conditioning. See, because when you say something sounds ridiculous, it's because your current web of beliefs doesn't allow that to sound anything, you know, like, like, it doesn't allow it to sound accurate. It only sounds ridiculous relative to your current beliefs. So if you're not, you know, uh, a hardcore Christian who believes in Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, you know, let's say you're an atheist, that's going to sound ridiculous to an atheist, whereas to a Christian, uh, that sounds like the absolute truth and all reality ever could be. It's just Jesus. So like I said, it sounds ridiculous relative to your current web of beliefs. And in no way am I saying all beliefs are simply equal or all ideas are equal. Some ideas are more accurate than others. Like I said, truth is kind of like a spectrum. Some are 80% true and 20% false. Some can be 80% false, 20% true, and anywhere on this spectrum. Moving along, it's the fifth one and basically the last point. There are many social benefits to being open-minded. This is a bit more practical. Uh, we will be able to embrace other people to a larger degree. So human beings get sucked into conflict a lot. We can see this with the culture wars 
arguments and school arguments and the workplace. And people are not just idiots, okay? <laughs> uh, people like yourself have a lot of, you know, valid reasons to them as to why they think a certain way or why they do a certain thing or why they believe this or whatever, why they eat this food. And to them, the reasons are very valid. And being able to actually take on their perspective and take on their ideas or just entertain them will actually boost your interpersonal skills because you'll be able to connect to people in a much more effortless way because you're not going to be very attached to your ideas and you'll be able to genuinely connect with them and actually appreciate them. It's just a sense of compassion and appreciation for the other person and that they have value that uh, they can offer you and you have value that you can offer them and there can be a sort of mutual exchange. Um, what else do I want to say? I guess that's kind of it. That basically sums up the video. And one more point. Uh, <laughs> You got to really get the feeling of being closed minded. That's really what I'm pointing to. I'm not pointing to uh, something really philosophical and abstract. I'm pointing more towards how it actually makes you feel and how your body actually reacts to it and how your mind reacts to it. So you got to get these observations. It's not just about some abstract philosophical theory. It's very much, to, you know, it very much connects with your. Uh, sort of moment-to-moment -moment experience, how you're feeling, how you're thinking, how you're analyzing the world, how aware you are, what is actually in your awareness. So uh, this, this isn't just like a philosophical conversation. This is very much grounded and actually rather practical, but it, it can only be that way. You can only notice that after you've done some work and you really see like, yeah, this has really shaped up my mind uh, because... <laughs> When you work on your mind and when you work on your awareness, you're simultaneously enhancing every other area of your life since every area of your life is very much dictated by your awareness, by even just your mind, your thinking, and your ability to make sense of them. So these are very key. Your ability to make sense of reality and what is actually in your awareness and your degree of or the degree to which you can simply witness things so what i mean by the degree to which you can simply witness things or the capacity for witnessing is just the capacity to allow what's happening in reality to simply happen without pushing or pulling on it without resisting it or without you know pulling it towards you or changing it manipulating it just the capacity to witness it so when you're being closed-minded not judge it or get involved with what's really happening but just watch it uh, for what it is, without a judgment, good or bad, just the capacity to witness. So that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps my channel to grow, and I greatly appreciate that. If you have any questions or comments, or questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll answer them. Just don't leave any stupid comments. No, I'm kidding. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching up until this point. It actually does mean a lot to me. I love making these videos. I love hearing from people. So yeah, have a great day.